Now, I'm not talking about being in church every time the doors are open. I'm not talking about having your Bible in your hand 24 hours a day. And I'm not talking about quoting Scripture and doing all And I'm, not, I'm just talking about live a life pleasing unto God. How can they live in sin and say, I'm a Christian? That's, that's my problem, Brother Sam. They're not Christians. They're not Christians. And I have a feeling for him. I hurt for him. Brother Corbin knows what I'm talking about because he and I have the same calling. He and I both are, are yearning for the souls. I'm concerned about the souls of the lost. I'm concerned. The homosexual. I, I could care less about the men. I could care less about the lesbian women. I, I, don't, I don't even want to be around them. But I care for their souls. When I get to heaven, I want to see their soul in heaven. I want to see them repent and come out from that sin. I want to see them get right with God and get everything ready so that when Christ does come for them, they can go. That's what I'm looking for. And it's not just homosexuals, and, but these transgender. I said this last week on television. I'm going to say it again. They don't need to be on the streets. Brother, you're judging. No, I'm not judging. If your DNA, if, I, if you take blood from a transgender person and that DNA says they're a male and they've got the plumbing of a male, the anatomy of a male, no matter what they think, they're male. They're male. And if their mind tells them they're a female, then they're crazy. I mean, you say, well, brother... How, it could be one of your children or grandchildren. Well, they're crazy. I'm serious. They, they don't need to be on the streets. They're dangerous. A person walking around don't know who he is. My goodness, if I, if I didn't know whether I was a man or a woman, I sure wouldn't be up here. I mean, I knew I've known all my life ever since I was a little boy. I knew that I was a male. And my DNA will show that I'm a male. And so if, if you've got the DNA of a male and you've got the anatomy of a male, you're a male. And if you think anything different, you need to be committed. You need to be off the streets because we don't need that kind of craziness walking on the streets. We don't need it. We don't need it. And church, the thing about these, these people that say that, they've got dumb doctors that will agree with them. I mean, I'm telling you, it's not right. And nobody will speak up about it. Nobody will speak out about it because they're afraid of hurting someone's feelings. If I'm on my way to hell, I don't care if you hurt my feelings. Get me on the right road. If I'm lost downtown New York, which I have been, if I'm lost in the bad part of town, down now, down uh, on the bad side of town, downtown in New York, and I need directions to get back to a, a good place, a safe place. I want you to give me those directions. Don't leave me sitting there. Give me directions to get me back to a safe place, a safe heaven, a haven. Get me back. And you see, we've got the road map to heaven. We've, we're all carrying it. The born-again children of God have it. We're carrying the road map. The road map is right here. And praise the Lord, those that are on their way to hell and don't realize that I've got the road map that I can show them the way to go, and it's the right way. They don't have to worry about it anymore because once you put them on that road, God's going to make sure that they get to the right direction once it's been placed in their possession. So I want them to have that peace that only God can give. And, you know, uh, and, and in Philippians 4, 7, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Christ tells us, he said, I come to leave you peace. And I think that's in 14, 27. Somebody can look it up. I think it's in John 14, 27. He said, I come to leave you peace or I come to give you peace. And it's not the peace of the world. But he said, I come to give you peace, and this peace is beyond man's understanding, and the world right now cannot understand God's word. Those that are out in the world, those that belong to the world, the world cannot understand God's word because God has to open that understanding to them. This is where John 6, comes in, and John 14, 6 and 6, These two scriptures are very important to salvation, but yet nobody talks about them. 
Nobody wants to preach about John 14, 6 or John 6, 44. I've been preaching about it for 30 years, Brother David, and I have not yet heard another preacher stand up and put the two of them together and, and put together a sermon and stand upon those two scriptures. Because it's those two scriptures that mean the world to the child of God. You've got to be drawn by the Holy Ghost and you can't get to heaven except through and by Jesus. And yet everybody plays around it and dances around it. And this is why I feel like there's so many people in the world today that don't have that fear of God because they don't understand. They think that as long as I know the name of Jesus, uh, I'm going to be able to make it into heaven. But I've got something to tell you. There's coming a time, hallelujah, at the very last day, uh, many are going to be standing around saying, what happened? Uh, where in the world is everybody gone? Uh, and I'm here to tell you today that unless your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life uh, and unless you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, uh, you're going to be one step left standing, hallelujah, looking up to the sky saying, what in the world just took place? I'm telling you that only God's children, only those that are washed in the blood of the Lamb are going to be called out of here. The rest are going to be left behind. There's no other way. There's only one way to heaven, and it's by Jesus Christ. And you cannot just say, I love Jesus and not keep his commandments. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 16, I believe. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. I'll, let me look that up. Uh, I, I, I don't like quoting scriptures and not. And I would pray. No, that's not 14, 16. See, I told you wrong. 14, 14, 14, 14, 15. If you love me, I knew I was close. If you love me, keep my commandments. John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love God, you cannot say I love God and love sin at the same time or live in sin. Can you make mistakes? Yes, you can. Will God forgive you? Yes, he will. I told the church this morning, I wrote it down on a piece of paper, Lord, if you have any more forgiveness, if there's any left in the bucket, pour it out upon me. And I know some of you joining by television don't know what I'm talking about. But I was up here early this morning. I said, God, if you've got any more forgiveness left in your bucket, pour it out on me. Because I sure do need it. Because I fail him every day. And every day it makes me miserable to know that I failed him. I don't willfully go out, Brother Perry, and fail him. But praise God, I fail him every day. I know every day I'm not doing what I could be doing. I'm not doing what I possibly should be doing. But at the same time, I do fear God. And praise God, he's guided me away from. It lead me not into temptation. Deliver me from evil. And so far, God has taken me away from the temptations of the world. He's delivered me from the evil of the world. And he set my feet on the solid rock. And praise God, that's why I'm trying to get the message out today. This message is not only for you in here, but it's for each and every, the thousands and thousands that are joining by television because many of them don't know uh, that there is a way. Many of them don't know that there is a way that you can get from where you are. You can come out of the sin. God will take you out of that sin immediately and he'll put your feet on that straight and narrow path uh, and he'll lead you in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And praise God, when you're in that valley, he'll be there walking with you. He'll see you through the valley to the other side. Uh, he'll make sure that you're safe on the other side. He'll put an anointing upon your head. Hallelujah. That all the demons demons of hell can come against you all the enemy of hell can come around you but they're not going to be able to touch you because they can't get through God's anointing and your cup shall run over hallelujah and he says listen I'll send goodness and mercy he said I'll send goodness and mercy two angels uh, to follow you all the days of your life uh, and you will dwell in the house with the God with God, the Lord forever you will dwell with him uh, you're not going to be playing games with God why because he said listen uh, when you come to me saith the Lord uh, I'll walk with you I'll I'll put my hand upon you and I'll put my anointing upon you and all the demons of hell and all the demons of the world can come against you. But yea, I say unto my children this day, when my anointing is upon you, saith the Lord, nothing shall by any means harm you. Nothing can come against you because you are mine. I have put you out of the world. I have called you out of the world. I have set my heart in your heart and your mind in my mind. And I shall gather mine together as a hen gathers her brutes, said the Lord, and I shall take them all, and I shall deliver each and every one that are mine. I shall deliver them, saith the Lord. 